We're going to be talking about the Cinestill CS6 Creative Slide Kit, but first I want to say that I do not intend for this to detract from very important things that are going on right now. There are also links in the description. Thank you so much, and we're going to get to the episode. This episode, I have some Provia 100F, Kodak Ektachrome 100 E100, and Fuji Velvia 50. I believe the most recent version of Velvia 50, I don't really know for sure. It's just some stuff I've had frozen in my fridge for 10 years. Well, it seems like eons ago, Cine still started hyping up something to do with slide film on social media and on their website. When uh, they announced that it was indeed the CS6 Creative Slide Kit, I'm like, oh great. An E6 kit, you know, uh, like I can't get like three of those. If you're familiar at all with these home developing kits, they all seem pretty much the same. So I expected the same. When I saw Color Developer and I saw the Blix, I'm like, sure. I read and gave it a chance and they, they found something really interesting. I was uh, immediately excited by this news and also wondering how that even works. As pointed out in the marketing material, slide film was made to be projected and viewed backlit, and that often happened with tungsten lights. Slide film is not really viewed that way much anymore, like you would see in a slide viewer. This is probably an oversimplification of Cinestill's new offerings, but from what I've gathered, the Daylight Chrome is your standard E6 developer that you can get anywhere, essentially. The Dynamic Chrome is created to shift tones warm and also expand the notoriously narrow dynamic range of slide film. The tungsten chrome, like it sounds, sort of emulates the popular 800T film. They say this technology derives from color timing in cinema film, which makes sense that before digital intermediates, that you would have to have a way to color correct film. It wouldn't all be through filters or other means, that it could happen through development. It's kind of a, a modern approach in that we view it scanned now, and that involves a much cooler light source in general. Here we have the Cinestill T6 Tungsten Chrome developing kit, and the standard part of the E6 kit, the color developer, and the blips. All these developers are one-shot developers, and that's really weird to me because I'm used to like the C41 and other E6 kits. You can recycle them, and you can get your 10 to 20 rolls of film out of one batch. These are one-shot, so you dilute one to one, stock one to two, and so on, and you pour it down the drain. And it's really alien to me with these color film kits. So read the instructions very clearly, and here's something I've never done before. I completely botched mixing the fixer. I've never done it on a kit before. I just, in a pinch, I used my C41 Blix, which if you ask certain people online is the same thing, but it's not true. C41 Blix is not E6 Blix. So I, however, blixed it in some extra E6 Blix I had that I could mix up quickly and it, it cleared okay. And I gotta say the tungsten worked. Despite the blacks being a little washed out, I think due to the odd fixing situation, it was clear that the film on this one shifted heavily blue, which is exactly what you would want if you were going for what the, the advertised effect is. So promising. And then I did my next roll and it was a disaster. At this point I was lost and I wrote Cinestill and they they kind of talked through a few ideas and they they suggested that maybe i had like the chemicals had been spoiled at some point and it's like well that's crazy talk because i mix these in distilled water which is something i rarely do these days i clean my bottles meticulously and that's that's where it got me well today's provia looks better this is not perfect probably but you can see the slides, the color seems good. The rebate, the little uh, non-printed film area seems nice and dark. This is uh, nice right here. And uh, this is Fuji Provia 100, what is it, F, yeah, yeah, F. I used 
some FPP Unicolor Rapid E6 color developer. And this kit says about five minutes for the time, but I think I probably should have done closer to six, like this in a still kit still. So the best I can decide is that I've used these for multiple kits, that there was something left over in this bottle of second developer, color developer, that was different from um, what Cine still uses, and that probably spoiled it. So I guess the moral here is don't be cheap and just go ahead and buy new bottles. When you start these kits, you could probably recycle it from Cinestill to Cinestill, but I would not try to do it between kits because there are differences. Even if Tetanol makes all of them, I don't know if they make the Cinestill one. That's, the directions look the same, but I feel like they custom order it. Then I tried the extended highlight latitude a bit with some Velvia that I've had frozen in a fridge for like a decade. I don't know how expired it was when I got it. So I shot it around 25 to 50 and I really should have shot it around 12, but I think the dynamic chrome helped pull a little bit out of it. This was my first experience with Velvia and I don't have any kind of a baseline for it, although I know it's much more saturated and the dynamic range isn't great. And there wasn't much highlight latitude to actually save on here. But I think overall this did a nice job with it and I'm going to shoot more Velvia. Thankfully this roll of Provia turned out much more like I wanted it to. I did this with Dynamic Chrome mixed one to one I believe for warm tones and uh, it did warm it up a bit but true to my experience overall Provia is a little more neutral than Ektachrome I believe. I like Provia. If you don't want anything overly interpretive, I think Provia and to that extension Pro 400H are the way to go. You'll notice on these Ektachrome shots, the colors are a little more vibrant and it took to the warming effect more. I think I could probably have pushed it more on the Provia, but it seemed more natural on the Ektachrome. Regardless, these chemicals work very well either one, either way. I haven't tested heavily for pushing, the Exochrome seemed to react just fine to pushing. My Provia pushing attempt was, uh, well, was spoiled. So I will continue to work on that and see what else I can get. Here are a few face-to-face -face looks with just my first attempts at shooting Provia 100F versus Exochrome 100. And you'll see some differences emerging, although this is not scientific. And hopefully I'll get to do a few pictures in person shortly to kind of give a better baseline for this. Overall, it's a great kit. You've got to be extra careful. I would fully recommend that you use distilled water and fresh bottles, not cleaned, but fresh bottles for storage. Be extremely careful with how you interact with these chemicals at all. When I mean they're easy to spoil, they are really easy to spoil. But it's a great kit and it's not really that difficult to use, especially since you only have to keep the temperature really for the first developer. The other developers I've let drift all over, uh, or the second developer in the Blix have let drift all over and it's fine. So overall, it takes a bit longer than C41, but if you've done C41 or black and white, it's not going to be a huge stretch. Just uh, take your time mixing it <laughs> and you won't spoil your whole kit like I did. Another thing I really like about what Sinistil is doing is that they sell the kits in pieces. You can buy the Dynamic Chrome, the Daylight, and the Tungsten Chrome all separately and use your own color developer in Blix if you have it from other kits, like me. Or uh, you can just replace the color dev if you want to, or you can load up on extra Tungsten like I have already. And uh, it's cool about that. And I really like that they give you this kind of customizable thing that you can do. It's a major plus. The one detraction I have here is that the ORMD shipping is terrible from Cinestill. You could pay like $20 for shipping for like a little box of chemicals. And I get it, it's difficult to deal with. And it has to ship DHL, I think, which is not amazing, but yeah. It feels dumb to ask as a motorcycle drives by. I'm nearing the final 400 hours of watch time I need to get monetized. So it feels really stupid to ask during a time like this. But please subscribe and, and like the video. And 
if you have a moment, check out some of my other videos. I understand if you don't, they're definitely, definitely more important things right now, but I would appreciate it. And since I, like I've said, I don't have a job right now, a little YouTube income wouldn't hurt. Uh, anyway, uh, don't forget the links in the description and I will see you next week. Thanks. Bye.